Hi, this is Steve from Pixelbump. Welcome to the AE Bootcamp tutorial on transfer modes and pre-comps. So let's start off by talking about the different transfer modes. Now, there are a lot of different transfer modes. It's pretty hard to remember what each one of them does at all times. So it's always good to refresh them in your memory from time to time. Now, each one of these has a unique function, and fortunately there's a great reference from Adobe Press on what each of these things do. You can find this reference by just searching Adobe Press and Transfer Modes. All right, so let's get this guy out of the way and look at using some transfer modes on a 3D composite. So here we have one of the shots from Geek & Sundry's show Unplugged. And let me just play it through here for you. So let's start off by adding just a simple color. So in the original, it was a nice muted green. We'll make sure it's comp size, add it in, and drop it to the bottom. So let's turn the soloing off, and we're gonna get all our different render passes showing. We have an ambient occlusion pass, we have a shadow pass, a specular pass, a reflection pass, an illumination pass, and the beauty pass. The final pass is a depth pass, which we'll get to in another lesson. So in the ambient occlusion pass, we have a lot of beautiful detail. Now to keep that beautiful detail, we're gonna to wanna to use something from the subtractive mode. So either a darken or multiply. I prefer multiply, but that's just me. The same with shadow, we're gonna to wanna to add that in through either multiply or a darken. Then we're gonna to get to the specular, which is giving us those nice bright white hits. For that, let's start off with add. We may wanna switch that to screen later, but this is a good place to start. Reflection again, let's start with add, see how that looks. If it's too intense, we can always change it or bring it down. The illumination pass has a lot of gray in it. So let's try something like the overlay. And that looks really nice, but it's a little too intense. So let's start tuning that down a bit because we don't wanna to lose too much of our bright detail. Let's try 50% here. And let's turn off the depth pass for now. So now we're getting to see that green, beautiful green background. We've got our nice composite here. Overall, I'm actually pretty happy with how this looks right now. But one thing I'd love to do is add some motion blur to it. So let's pre-comp. And I usually add a PC signifier to all my pre-comps, so that way if I ever need to search, I can just look up PC to find all my pre-comps. And we'll just call this 3D. Oh, look what happened. <laughs> we lost our beautiful green background. And that's because when you pre-comp, your transfer modes are not automatically carried through in the alpha areas. Here in the image, still looks exactly the same, but we've lost the alpha information. If you wanna retain that, you need to click on the continuously rasterize button, and there it comes back. Now, most of the time this is gonna work great, but if you wanna add something like real smart motion blur, you're gonna get a beautiful motion blurred image, but again, you're going to lose your alpha information, and that is because there are plugins that do not play well with the continuously rasterized button. So how are we gonna fix this? Well, my favorite way is to actually take the original alpha image, or your original beauty pass, which has a lovely alpha right there in it, and add that back in through a stencil alpha. Now when I come back, I can turn on my real smart motion blur, and I'm only motion blurring that the alpha has been completely cut out without the continuously rasterize on. All right, so the next thing that can give us a problem is let's say we want to add a particular layer. And we're gonna add the plugin. So let's, for example, say, crank up the velocity just to get these particles out there and we'll make a bunch more of them. Now, what if you only wanted the particles on part of this image? 
there are a couple ways you can deal with this. But the first one that you might want to think is to mask. And it doesn't work. Masks in particular do not play well together at all. So the two ways you can deal with this are to either, you can pre-comp your particular layer, making sure that you move all attributes into the new composition. That will make it maskable. But now you've lost your particular controls. You can deal with this by either clicking the lock button in your effects panel. So when you come back to your composition, you still have it. Or what you can do, let's just grab this guy back over. Or what you can do is create a new solid and we'll call this the matte layer. You can mask the matte layer and then set your track mat from particular to an alpha mat. And that will solve the problem while retaining your controls here in the effects panel. So let's get rid of this stuff here and let's add a text layer. And we're just gonna say unplugged. Let's get it centered here. Scale it up a little bit. And let's just change the color over to a white. Let's move it below our 3D comp so that it gets revealed as the 3D pulls away. One of the favorite tricks is to create a new comp and we're gonna call this the text control. And in text control, I'm just gonna add a little bit of text that says on, off. And this text can be whatever you want it to be. It absolutely does not matter. Next, I'm gonna take my text pre, my text comp and make it side by side. And make it side by side with my open comp. Let's turn that text back on. Now I'm going to take my opacity control and I'm going to alt click in the open comp and I'm going to pick whip the opacity to the text control comp. Now what I've done is created a global text control. So anytime I want to come back and re-render my unplugged opening without the unplugged text, I can come in here turn the opacity off here, and it updates back in my open comp. Spin this out among lower thirds, among upper bugs, full screen graphics, and you get an idea of the amount of time you can save by having a global text control. So that's gonna wrap up this lesson. I hope you learned something useful for your work, and I hope you join us in the next video about tracking in After Effects and Mocha. Thank you very much, now go and create.